Just a few weeks into the tour, the Rolling Stones are winning their best reviews in years. Time, it appears, is on their side. Last summer, Jagger was knighted by the Queen. Keith Richards was furious. His partner accepting the title Sir Mick was not in the spirit of the Rolling Stones' outlaw image. I really just thought it was a paltry honor and that he'd thrown himself sort of into a pool of brown noses. <laughs> uh, let me ask you about Keith and the Sir thing. I don't want to talk about Keith. <laughs> I'm Dan Rather. I'm Bob Simon. I'm Charlie Rose. I'm Vicki Mabry. I'm Scott Pelley. I'm Ed Bradley. Those stories and Charles Grodin tonight on 60 Minutes 2. Usted está viendo 60 Minutos. Continúa 60 Minutos. When the Rolling Stones set out last month on their first world tour in three years, there were a lot of big numbers to marvel at. This is their 40th year as a band. They average 58 years old, and they're on track to gross as much as $300 million in the next 12 months. Sure, it's only rock and roll, but it's also big business. Eight years after we first met them, they invited us on tour again to find out how they managed to live up to their reputation as the world's greatest rock and roll band. Just a few weeks into the tour, the Rolling Stones are winning their best reviews in years. Judging from this show at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia last week, it looks like time is on their side. Ronnie Wood is 55, Keith Richards is 58, Charlie Watts, 61, and Mick Jagger is 59. Is it harder for you today, I mean, as you get older? I was, like, ready for it to be hard. You know, you've got to, like, say, oh, well, I'm ready. If it's hard, I'll just do less. Or I'll train harder. Or But it, I haven't really found it that, that hard. This is the most ambitious tour the Stones have ever attempted. In addition to massive stadium shows, they are also playing 20,000-seat indoor arenas and 3,000-seat theaters, sometimes all three venues in the same city. They will play 45 shows in North America before setting off around the world for the next year. And every show demands the Stones' trademark energy, which is why Jagger has been exercising for months to get in shape. I've read a lot about how Mick prepares to go out on tour, and he tries to get in shape, and he lifts the weights and all of that. How do you prepare for a tour? <laughs> <laughs> I just turn up, and I have no secrets, you know? No bike? Um, no, I, I, I'm... People ask me if I work out, I say, are you kidding? I play guitar with the Rolling Stones. <laughs> I mean, you try that. I mean, that's enough of a workout for anybody. You told me eight years ago, at some point, you said... Thanks. <laughs> Go on. You said the Rolling Stones are going to look silly doing this at some point. Obviously, you haven't reached that point. Maybe we have, I don't know. I can't tell. We have a meeting and uh, you feel you're sissy if you say no. What? And they'll have plenty of help. This tour takes over 300 people to run. They have 350 tons of gear and a 300,000 watt sound system 
all transported by 53 semis. In a stadium show, everything is bigger than life. This is a 70 by 35 foot, $5 million video screen. You see the sections? Yeah. So it all comes from behind. It comes yeah. from actually from that fold and it comes around. So it's not here when we come out and has separate images on it and then it joins up. and sound checks for every show are critical because each show features a different set of songs. They have over 400 from which to choose. But look, how many songs did you rehearse for this tour? 140. It's <laughs> a lot of words to remember. I know, I don't, I don't huh? try to remember all the words. Yeah. I remember all the lyrics of this show. I don't oh. need any lyric prompting, but I might need prompting to do certain things like, uh, well, remember what town I'm in. <laughs> Jagger's He's, humor is a smokescreen. Age is not the Stones' nemesis, it's their friend. Four decades of experience has made them savvy businessmen. You don't want my trousers to pull down, now do you? In 1969, they revolutionized the touring business by bringing their own state-of-the-art sound and lighting equipment to every show. In 1972, they gave themselves a brand identity, the now iconic Tongue logo. By 1975, they turned mundane tour announcements into media events. With each successive tour, the Stones found ways to do it bigger and better. Fortune magazine estimates that since 1989, they have generated one and a half billion dollars in revenue money that comes from several complementary yet separate businesses. This time for their 40th anniversary as a band, they've released a two CD set of their greatest hits called 40 Licks. That is also the name of the tour. The CD promotes the tour, the tour sells CDs, and each concert makes for a brisk merchandising business. T-shirts, concerts, and CDs feeding each other means stone synergy in full flower. Have you always been so professional about the business end of rock and roll? Well, no, not when I was starting out. I mean, there was no business, hardly any business model or any business in it. You know, all there was was record companies that ripped you off. This is really big business, the Rolling Stones. Oh, it tour. is. It is big business. Um, if, if, if I was to consider it all on paper, I mean, it's an international concern. But at the same time, it really, when it breaks you down, down, it's still a mum and pop store. You know, we've got no shareholders, no stockholders. Uh, and Basically, when it comes down to it, it's Mick and me, you know, and we are still fighting about who's mom and who's pop. <laughs> Nonetheless, the family concern is not all business. We found that out eight years ago when we first met them in New Orleans. Jagger and Watts didn't hesitate when we asked them to go to a local New Orleans parade. Jagger was right at home in the second line. I was impressed by your, and maybe I consider it your professionalism. I remember when we were in New Orleans that day, I mean, it was a funky, rainy day, and I mean, you, you could have easily said, hey, let's not do this. And I, I wondered if it was because you really were that into seeing the parade or there was a professional obligation to go ahead and do this. No, I just thought it was more of a fun thing to do <laughs> than a professional obligation. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Having fun is of primary concern to all of the Rolling Stones. Just look at how they travel from city to city. So this is the plane. Ronnie Wood likes the ride. It's a 727 customized for 60 to fly in style. Here's a couple of uh, pals here hanging out. 
Charlie's normally in here, and here's Mick, a family man with Lizzie. Hello. That's Mick's daughter. Here we are. Isn't it lovely on the plane? You know. This expensive first-class operation means the tour won't break even for months. <laughs> It's a big gamble, one that Jagger did all he could to guarantee the investment. He even confronted Ronnie Wood about the guitarist's lifelong drinking problem. There was a story that I'd heard that Mick came and gave you an, an ultimatum and said, if you don't clean up your act, you're not going to go on tour. No, it wasn't an ultimatum. It was, it was more like a plea from a friend saying, please help, help yourself. It was like, you won't be able to survive it if you, if you don't do something, you know? You're not made of iron. The plea worked. Wood is sober and in the best form of his life. But Ronnie Wood's problem was not the only hurdle Jagger had to clear at the start of this tour. Last summer, he was knighted by the Queen. Keith Richards was furious. His partner accepting the title Sir Mick was not in the spirit of the Rolling Stones' outlaw image. Richard said so to almost every reporter who would listen. You talked about the esprit de corps mm -hmm. that, that you have in the band. Sometimes you prick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they do, yeah, yeah. Now, when I think somebody's breaking rank, you know, I mean, obviously, I mean, we're going to talk about Mick, you know, and knighthoods and things like that. Yeah, it, uh, I really just thought it was a paltry honor and that it thrown himself sort of into a pool of brown noses. <laughs> I, I take it you don't call him Sir Mick. No, we have other names there. <laughs> uh, let me ask you about Keith and the Sir thing. I don't want to talk about Keith. <laughs> that says a lot. Well, not really. I just don't want to get involved with an argument about Keith. That's not an argument. Well, a I mean, discussion. He said, yeah, but he said some, you know, I mean, does he do that just to get under your skin, or do you think? I don't really know. You just don't want to go there. That's right. <laughs> he doesn't want to talk about it. Oh, no, of course he don't. <laughs> <laughs> you get a kick out of it. Kind of. <laughs> you know, I mean, there he goes again, pick him up and wash him off and oh. get him ready, you know. Is, is there any truth to the, the adage that from conflict like that comes great partnerships, great collaborations? I, 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 looking back on it, I would, I would say that there's, there's a good element of truth in that. The clash, like the yin and the yang, boom, um, that produces... Uh, this chemistry after all we love each other very much and maybe that's one of the reasons because you if you've known somebody as long as mick and i have you know it's uh, you can do things to each other that uh, would seem to be so offensive to anybody else but in actual fact it's just a sort of smack on the wrist from as far as we're concerned <laughs> Off stage, some of the Stones may have problems, but on stage, the band remains rock music's benchmark, 40 years and counting. This is where all the business models and dust-ups are left behind. What's your motivation after all these years? The same as it was when I started. Um, it says that people still want to hear it. I mean, I'll do it as long as they want to hear it and as long as I'm capable. Because after all, I get a, an incredible uh, amount of uh, satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line. <laughs> I 